Welcome to Live at the Barn. My name is Paul Rellinger. Tonight we're presenting the music of Bywater Call. We'll talk to some members of the band as well. So you slip away so helplessly, I pray for more time. Empty are the days, I learn to leave the space between the lines. Inside these walls, oh, I shouldn't wait for your call. Now I'm living all for yesterday, spinning back and forth with what you'd say. But I just can't find another way I'm locked down in love Lover, can you find me? Beyond the shuttered places that we go Does a voice remind you quietly The truth inside the hidden starts to show Waiting here for nothing more The drug that drives the sense out from my mind It all must be to block out all the colors left behind. Every day inside of my heart, all that keeps us, tears us apart. Now, 
Now we're gonna be playing a few tunes tonight that we have never played for anybody live. And that was one of them. So thank you for being a part of that. Um, it's a little behind the scenes because you're, you're seeing us work out uh, the stuff we're gonna put on the new album. So that's exciting for us and thank you for being here for that. Gonna do a little Dr. John.
Julia Nally on saxophone, Steve Dead on trumpet. This is uh, our third gig as a gig as a full band since we came back from Europe in at the beginning of March in 2020. And it's our second gig with any kind of audience, and it's a very small, intimate audience tonight. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And it's our first gig as a full band inside a structure in a while. Welcome to the barn. Thank you. Yeah, great to have you here. Uh, you're a Peterborough native. Uh, grew up in Peterborough. Uh, tell me about those early years in Peterborough, and, and especially growing up in a, in, well, not only in a musical city, but certainly a very musical family. Uh, what kind of influences did you have uh, as a young, young girl? Uh, so, it, Peterborough is is a strange connection for me. Um, I don't have like a specific hometown because we actually moved quite a bit. But I was born here. I lived here until I was four, and then we came back here for like the formative years of grade six to grade nine. Okay. Um, in my house, my mom sang constantly, whatever was in her brain, and we would listen to a lot of, um, I don't know, there was a lot of Janis Joplin. She would, uh, she would sing out a little Aqualung. <laughs> Jets roll tall. To, nice. a, to, to a child, it's very appropriate, you know? <laughs> yeah. Beatles everywhere. My dad had like BB King records playing all the time. Yeah, yeah, my folks were huge um, fans of like the music of their generations, big Beatles fans, Stones. Um, so we listened to a lot of that growing up. Um, yeah, definitely. And then in the high school, um, I was, you know, we're talking, I guess, 90s. Um, <laughs> I was really into Pink Floyd and Zeppelin and sure. Hendrix. You know, I was the kid with the the denim jacket with the patches all over of it. Course, you know, like of that course. was yeah. that was it. And um, yeah, so like it was a huge influence growing up. And as I got older, I went into various jobs, but I always felt like a pull. Like I, I felt like I, I, there's something I need to be doing, and yeah. I don't feel right doing what I'm doing now. Yeah, I. I sing all my life, like to myself. Like I've always identified as a singer, but I never really pursued it. My first kind of passion when I did try to pursue music was in musical theater. Right. Um, and I came to Toronto, the big city, and I stood in line for a bunch of auditions, and um, but never really, like I didn't go to school for it or anything like that. And then that kind of university work all kind of got in the way. Sure. And then um, I met a musician who was like, you should be in a band. And it kind of just was a whirlwind from there. I joined his band. I went from doing like almost nothing to doing um, six nights a week in Morocco, which was amazing uh -huh. and very much jumping off the deep end and it was hard, but kind of learned about being up front and singing in front of an audience, yeah. you know, through three full sets. What was it about Megan? that kind of, uh, you know, said, this is the one. We had, we'd worked with vocals and they were really great, but it wasn't what we were looking for at all. And as soon as I heard Megan, I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for, is yeah. a girl with a huge sound um, that can just entertain an audience. And uh, yeah, she's been incredible ever since. Yeah. And, and that's that's how we got started. This band, uh, Bywater Call, um, was founded, I believe, in 2017 by yourself and Dave. And yeah. kind of tell me how that kind of came together. So Dave and I have been playing together for, and a, a few of the other guys in, in Bywater, we've been playing together for probably 13 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, when I got back from Morocco, I didn't gig for a little bit because I was recovering. And then through a friend, um, I was put in touch with Dave because he needed a singer for a cover band he was putting together. Um, so I went, I did a jam with him and Mike, our bass player, and a couple other musicians. Okay. And that night, he's like, you're hired on the spot, <laughs> and that's how I met Dave. So then we um, worked on that band for a number of years, and um, we're, we are partners in life as well as in music. So, you know, spending all that time together and having very similar musical influences and having done cover music for so long, we both kind of got to the point where we're like, we need to start making our own music. Talk to me about the band dynamic itself. Is that something that, again, t 
takes time to kind of work on and perfect or was it there right away? What, the, what we'll do together is we'll, we'll come up with a seed of an idea and then it's a very almost Jenga-esque process where there's like layers continually added and, and sort of it goes along and along and, and, and more comes about. Like a work and in progress. Kind all of, of a sudden yeah. that layer two that made a lot of sense on top of layer one doesn't work anymore and that gets strapped. And that's what the horns will do. They'll be like, okay, well, we'll add this and then the, the, we'll be like, we'll react to that and add an, another thing. Yeah. And then as that goes along, we'll be like, okay, let's change that now. So there's a lot, it's very dynamic and very fluid in terms of trying to build a final product that we're really happy with yeah. and and I think that's as a songwriter that's key is just adding stuff and then taking it away and re redoing things. Most of the kind of skeleton of a song starts with us most of the time Dave so Dave will come up with an idea a chord structure a vibe uh, he'll send it to me we'll start throwing around vocal melodies mm -hmm. lyrics whatever and we'll go back and forth on that sometimes we do it which is funny because we're in the same house, but sometimes we'll do that like from our perspective s recording setups and just send recordings right. back and forth. And then sometimes we're like, okay, we're at the point we should probably just sit down and in the backyard and jam some stuff <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah, we've done enough on yeah. our own. Yeah, and now then, it's we, then we feel, when we feel like we've kind of, okay, we've got a song here and needs a little bit more um, body to it, we'll take it to the guys and do some workshopping with the, the rest of the band. Here's another new one. This is called Ties It Bind. Crazy mm -hmm. 
you. How's everybody doing? Live music's coming back. Rick and Gailey have been playing. Yeah, it's great. So good to see. Uh, so this is uh, Fortune.
it up for Dave's capo. To be available for you to say, but I'm about to go, and then you'll know for me to stay here. I got to be me.
sounds of Midas on the keys. Cheers to my red solo cup. Made the shot. Sorry. So the album came out, uh, it's getting good reviews, and then the fun part comes, you take the album on the road, but you just don't go on the road, you go across an ocean. About 45 shows in 39 cities or something like that, it was crazy. I, like, like it, was, it was 39 shows in 45 four, days I, I had or it something backwards. like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Um, and it was like... That's nuts. I think we hit seven or eight countries. Yeah, it was crazy. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. it's, there's, an, there's an amazing community I, I mean it reminds us a little bit of Peterborough to bring it back to this where there's like a built-in um, appreciation for music in Peterborough that I think actually is hard to come by yep. in, in a lot of Canada yeah and um, and you found much the same there oh yeah yeah I mean they didn't know who we were and we were selling out venues yeah it was insane yeah crazy yeah they're um, willing to take a chance on like you know you get a snippet of something just be like we're gonna go see this so the album comes out, it's doing well, you go on tour, what could go wrong, and then March 2020 comes. Yeah. I'll ask the obvious, how disappointing was that for you? Uh, you yeah. know, you're, you're yeah, ready was, to go, right? Yeah, I, it was extremely disappointing. We were supposed to, you know, we had done this big thing in Europe, people came out and saw us, shows were sold out. Um, we're still trying to fo find our footing in Canada. Like, we definitely have a fan base, but not what we want. Mm -hmm. And this was going to be that, like we were going to go out west. We had stuff in Vancouver. We had stuff in um, more northern BC. We were going to go to Edmonton. We were going to go to Fredericton. I think we were going to go to Montreal. Like it was, it was our first chance to kind of go across Canada and start building in person a following. Yep. And then boom. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Just gone. In the onset, um, I think we were all just. I think when. It's hard to remember March 2020, yeah. but we just landed and this thing was coming around and we were all talking about it. And it was like, hmm. I remember one of my comments at the time was like, this thing's going to last two, three weeks and then everyone's going to get sick of it and life's going to go on as normal. <laughs> yeah. I wish you were right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so wrong. And as the months went on, it was like, oh, we're actually, it's actually kind of a nice moment for humanity. It was like, look, the, the vulnerable section of the population is super vulnerable, obviously. The elderly section is super vulnerable. Yeah. We're going to try to take care of these people. We need to protect these people. And in order to do that, we've got to shut it all down. Yeah. I was like, wow. I never, prior to that, I never thought that would have happened. Yeah. So coming out of COVID, uh, what, what do you see coming up for you guys? Uh, we've been writing for our next album. So we're going to be going into studio in the fall. And uh, hopefully it'll be out either late 2021 or early 2022. Okay. We've got, uh, we've got some shows and festivals planned for... Um, I guess the summer into the fall, we're playing Southside Shuffle in Port Credit. We're playing uh, the Paisley Blues Festival. We've got a show at the Hartwood Theater in Owen Sound and a few other things here and there. Yeah. And then we're going back for two tours in Europe in 2022. Back to Europe. Yeah. Nice. Dave, what, do you, what do you see coming out of COVID? Not just for Bywater Call, but uh, for music in general. I mean, we saw a lot of... A lot of people are talking about it's going to be a hybrid of a lot more online stuff because people know they can do it now, plus right. the live performance. Uh, what, what, what do you see from what you know? I, I wouldn't agree with that. I don't, from, for, I don't I, I could, this could be my own personal bias, but I sure. didn't see the live streams as a great, um, I think people, I think the connection to live music is, is more, um, it's a personal thing and you've got to be there to feel it. You've got to know. It's like, I agree. it's like someone retelling a good joke. It's like, uh, you yeah. had to be there, right? Yeah. Um, I think post COVID, um, I think we all learned exactly how entertaining Netflix is. I think we should all reflect on how much fun did you have watching your TV for 16 months straight? <laughs> because there, you, that's what that is. And yeah. do you want the, you know, your short time on this planet to have a more diverse array, array of experiences, or is it going to constantly be, well, there's you know 2,500 hours of the, the Office to watch. Let's go through them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. that's great one night a week, but maybe the other nights you could go to the zoo or yeah, see a sure. movie or yeah. see a band. You know, like there's lots to do. So, uh, what I'm hoping is is a resurgence in uh, personal interaction and and and, yeah. and real experience. People are starved for music. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you guys are going to feed them. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's where we get here's where we get really behind the scenes with this band. And we decided to share with you 
a tune we are very much still writing, um, but we're enjoying the process of it. So, you know, I wrote the second verse today in the van, and uh, we re re rewrote some of the chords yesterday, and uh, we just wanted to kind of give you guys and whoever tunes in a little glimpse into how we piece these together.
little unfinished by water for you. November also 2019, you released your debut self-titled uh, album. Mm -hmm. um, for a debut album, uh, it, it was received really well. Yeah, we read some really nice words about it. Um, to me, it was the reviews where it was really clear that some of these critics yep. had fully listened to the album. Mm -hmm. You know, like they would talk about certain tunes and I'm like, they, they got it. Yeah. You know, they, they understood what we were going for there. And that was really cool. Yeah, and you see. kind of respect a reviewer when you... Yeah, 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 that was really cool to see. And then... Um, you know, kind of where they were coming from too. You know, we got some stuff, a bit of stuff out of Canada, a bit of stuff out of the States. We got a bunch of stuff out of Europe, which, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's always nice to read kind words about what you're doing. For and, sure, yeah. yeah. Are you excited for the future by Water Call? Is this band really just scratch the surface? Definitely, yeah, very much so. It's, it's great to have a project that's um, constantly, like uh, the, the seven guys, six, six guys and Megan, um, we just, we're constantly tweaking and changing and oh, let's try something like this or should we do a song like that and like that's that's so exciting every day to be like oh we're gonna do this kind of a style or this kind of a song now and we love that um and just the experiences we've had doing it like even just sit in the green room now we just you know yeah. it's it's a blast we have an amazing group of musicians who like I said, some of them we've been playing with for years and they've come along with us on this journey, which is pretty incredible. Like we were talking to a couple of the guys a few weeks ago mm -hmm. about how through all of this, like not one band member has changed yet. I mean, it'll happen eventually probably, but <laughs> enjoy that so while far, you can, right? And, yeah. and, and everybody is really open and honest kind of about, mm -hmm. about the music and, and you know, we, we all talk openly about where we want it to go and, how we feel about what we're doing and and having that I think is is fairly rare.
Mr. Dave Barnes. A little Julian Nappy. All right, it's very possible, maybe with one exception, this tune has never been played anywhere but in Europe. We wrote this to close the show, show -er, the show, when we were on tour. See how I put those together into one word? Uh, there is an audience participation component. Be ready.
Yeah, we gotta hear it. Sing 